Hey everyone, Mr. Erdreich here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I created my stowaway simulator, a cabinet that turns into a racing simulator right in my living room. Now, as always, you can find more details for this project video on my Instructables post at the link below where I share some greater detail and different techniques for actually building this project to accompany this overview video. So the dream for this project actually started when I was a kid and I always wanted a racing simulator, but as a kid, my budget was less than zero and I didn't have the permissions to get such a thing. So I just made do with a coffee table and some pillows to kind of build a racing cockpit. Now with a house of my own, I have a new problem and that was where would I store it? And my roommate, my wife, uh, didn't really want it in the living room and I have to agree. So I was faced with this issue that if I bought a racing simulator, I'd end up putting it in a basement or a closet, and then the amount of effort to get it out for the few times I actually play would mean that I would never use it, which would kind of defeat the purpose. And that's what led me to this project, a cabinet that could go in the living room or looks good anywhere, but then unfolds and opens into an adjustable racing simulator cockpit. And that is this project and what I plan to share. Now, I actually built this project a few years ago, uh, but failed to put together a documentation or a tutorial or anything. So my pictures and my documentation are a little bit less than par, and I apologize for that. I'm gonna do my best to show you how I designed and fabricated this simulator because I used a combination of woodworking, 3D printing, laser cutting, and a lot of different things to actually put this together. And I'm pretty happy with the overall outcome and the project. So the first thing I had to do was come up with some measurements. And it was really important for me that this entire simulator is adjustable, not just fit for me. So that way I could always open it and adjust it to somebody with a different build if people come over or somebody else wants to try it. So I used myself as a guideline, but I kind of made it so I could either move things a little bit closer or a little bit bigger for somebody with a larger or smaller build than myself. And getting measurements of my driving position was a little difficult. So I actually used ImageJ, a pretty simple program that allows you to take measurements based upon a photograph if you create some type of scale. So I held a tape measure in my hand that I knew was exactly 12 inches. And then in ImageJ, I could actually measure lengths and angles to come up with a good starting point for the actual simulator. Then with these measurements, I had to select my actual wheel setup. And obviously there's tons of options, each to your own preference. Again, I made this a few years ago, so I'm using my Logitech G29, which is for my PlayStation 4. Uh, and after selecting that, I could actually start to do the build system. So it all started with the wheel rest, and that supports the wheel and the shifter assembly. And this whole thing could be adjustable in three ways. The first is that the actual wheel itself, the wheel angle can be adjusted. The second is the actual arm can be adjusted and that would adjust how close it is to you and also allows it to fold away for storage purposes. And then I wanted the shifter to be adjusted as well so that way you could adjust the shifting position or fold it in for when the cabinet's not in use or move it completely out of the way if you're not using the six speed shifter and if you're using just paddles or something like that instead. So it started by just placing the wheel and what would be the shifter mount on a piece of plywood and then cutting out a basic table with the jigsaw. I 3D printed a lot of different brackets. So I 3D printed all the different pivot brackets and the plate to support the shifter. And I used my Lulzbot TAS 6 with the Moore Struder head, uh, which has now been replaced by the HS Plus head. And it's essentially a print head with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle that allows you to 3D print really aggressive and heavy duty parts. And I just used PLA filament to make all of these. So with the table cut, I could then mount it to a two by four, again with a pivot point using my 3D printed part. And that would rotate in this half circle holder that I created using my laser and a handheld router. Later, I actually added some additional panels, still laser cut, and wood glued them all together, which added a lot more rigidity and made the wheel assembly way more sturdy. But anyway, what this allows me to do is rotate this two by four arm up and down using a series of pins just to lock it in place. And that allows you to set your position and set where you want it to be, whether you want to move farther away or move your wheel closer. And then because there's two pivot points, the wheel can rotate and the actual arm can rotate and the shifter can rotate, which gives you a really good uh, adjustability for this actual cockpit. The next thing that I created was the pedal rest. And this is a pretty simple table. And I ended up adjusting the pedals in two possible ways. So the first that the whole table is on a pivot, again, using 3D printed parts. And I made an arm that reminds me a lot of like a lawn chair where you can adjust the back of a lawn chair, like a lounge thing for outside, where essentially there's these hooks on the bottom of the plate. And what you can do is you can lift it and move a wooden dowel and lower it. And that would give you three possible angle positions. 
That, accompanied with Velcro, which allows you to move the whole pedal assembly up and down the table, gives you this really nice angle adjustment and also pedal position adjustment. Again, using 3D printed uh, brackets and a series of bolts just to hold it together. For seating, I originally designed this to slide under my couch. So you'd be sitting on the couch and then the simulator would slide under the couch and that would be your seating position. Between building this, we actually bought a new couch which has a pull out like footrest thing, which meant that that was off the table. So then I redesigned it to actually have a folding chair, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. To build the cabinet, I took my wheel assembly and my pedal assembly and I placed it on a half inch sheet of plywood. And it ended up being 16 inches wide for the foot panel. So that's actually what's gonna be the face and what I'm sitting on right now, it holds the wheel and everything together. And then 17 inches wide for the side panel, all by about six feet long or 72 inches long or so. So I was able to use my basic measurements from image J to get my pedal position and move everything together. And I wasn't too worried about it because I made everything so adjustable. And I was able to fix everything down using a series of glue and screws. An important step here was I designed a base frame. So that was made using one by one pine. And that base frame not only acts as a footrest for the pedals, but also acts as what it's gonna stand on when it's in storage mode. To make everything a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I then nailed trim pieces to give it like a typical barn style X, which just works for everything else in my house and makes it look kind of like a cabinet, not a racing simulator, which of course is the point. The two panels are held together using these really fancy cabinet hinges and they snap in 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So it allows it to snap together when it's vertically and then open up. And they're pretty sturdy, so it holds the cabinet without any additional bracing. And I was pretty impressed with those hinges as I designed this cabinet. Then for finishing, I put a coat of Minwax English Chestnut Stain and Polyurethane on the outside. And on the inside, I just painted everything matte black to kind of give it this nice flat appearance to it. After painting, I just had to assemble everything again, which was already mock put together during testing and fabrication. So it was a matter of putting the bolts in, putting the pins in, getting everything set up, and then transporting the cabinet home. I also added a little bit of felt feet, so that way when it was on my floors, I wouldn't scratch up my floors, so just little felt pads on the bottom frame that I created. And then that again brings me to this seating position. So because I couldn't put it under a couch, it couldn't slid up under your couch, I found a folding chair from Home Depot that fits in the cabinet is only 17 inches wide. So it fits in the cabinet with the cabinet closed. And to support the chair, I put little foot rests so that way the chair couldn't slide off and would actually tell me roughly where I wanted to sit. So it gives me kind of sit, uh, seating positions as if you're sliding your car seat up backwards and forwards. And then I just added a little Velcro tie that holds the chair in place when the cabinet is in storage mode. I was a little disappointed that I couldn't just slide this up under a couch. I kind of thought that the idea of the stowaway simulator is this, this cabinet that you unfold, goes to your couch, and now all of a sudden you have like this perfect little in the living room simulation. But in the end, the folding chair actually gives you an additional level of adjustability because now you can easily slide yourself forward or backwards in addition to adjusting the steering wheel and the pedals. And it does actually increase the overall comfort and I think the performance as well. So in the end, it worked out. So all in all, I like this build a lot. It was a lot of fun. And again, it kind of hit this desire and dream that I've had since I was a kid of having this racing simulator. And while it might not be as rigid or as comfortable as a fancy like F1 play seat, it does the job and it's custom. So it allows me to have a racing simulator in my living room. And I think it's a pretty cool build. So thank you for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. Again, feel free to check out my Instructables post for more detail and more information about how I build this. And don't forget to subscribe for future projects and stay tuned with my social media pages on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for future Project of the Day posts. Thanks for watching.